Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to a new video. So I'm actually redoing the spark plugs. If you guys haven't been following along, I had an issue with the spark plug changes that I did uh, a couple weeks ago. Uh, five out of the six cracked, which is crazy. So I got six brand new OEM spark plugs. I'm gonna redo the job. Be way more careful, make sure I don't over torque anything. Uh, because I feel like that was what the issue was. Um, I really wasn't putting much torque on it, but I guess it was just too much uh, overall and ended up cracking. I was having misfire issues. It was a pain in the butt. Uh, so right now I actually have five of the old spark plugs in, one new. So I'm going to go ahead, remove everything again, do the job over. It only takes about half an hour, 45 minutes, so it's not too bad. Uh, so I'm going to knock that out and then I'm going to go for a quick little drive, make sure everything's okay, and then we can move on. <music> All right, guys, job finished. That took about 40 minutes. So much easier when you know exactly what you're doing. You know exactly the torque spec and all that. So did it nice and easy. Everything is good. I had no cracks, had no issues. Um, so here's a look at the spark plugs that were in it, which were the old ones, except for uh, cylinder four. This was a new one that didn't crack. So this one was totally fine, but I'm gonna keep that one just in case. One, two, three, and five and six had the old plugs in just for the time being, since all the other new ones cracked. Uh, but yeah, we are good to go. So I'm going to toss uh, these ones, keep that one just in case if we ever need it. And uh, yeah, so I'm going to go take a little quick test drive just to make sure everything's okay, which I'm sure it is. Uh, and then uh, we'll move on to the next thing. All right, guys. So now that we got everything done with the truck, what this video is actually going to be is a full garage tour. I've been getting asked this question or to do this video very, very often. So I figured I would kind of walk around show everything, give all the details of everything that I have in the garage, uh, and just kind of give uh, an explanation as to why I chose what I chose and kind of my future plans. So let's first start talking about dimensions. Just give an idea of the size of the space so people can get a reference. This is a basic 20 by 20 two car garage. Nothing crazy, nothing massive or anything like that. It's pretty reasonable uh, for most home builds and, and most homes these days. Obviously, if I had it my way and I was able to build a garage, or find something a little bit bigger. I would love uh, an oversized two car, even a three car would be really nice, but I'm incredibly grateful and very, very happy that uh, I have this space. Uh, 20 by 20 is uh, more than enough for me to get things done, uh, but having that little extra space, you know, an oversized two car would be really, really nice, maybe down the line, but for now, very, very thankful for it. My first house was actually just a one car garage. I forget the actual size of it, the wall was pretty much like right here for my car. Um, so I wasn't even able really to do too much work. I was able to get things done, uh, but I just remember jacking the car up and the actual handle would hit the wall. I wasn't able to do like a full uh, pump of the actual jack. So having a 20 by 20 two car garage uh, is a huge upgrade for me and I'm very, very thankful uh, for this space. Now let's just quickly talk about the walls just so you get an understanding as to why it's half sheet rocked and half not. The laws and regulations back when this house was built, um, they actually said that you had to have anything touching the house, any part of the garage that was touching the house, had to be sheet rocked and insulated. So anything that you see that is not sheet rocked and insulated is open. You know, it's open to the outside. Uh, it's not touching the house or anything like that. So um, that is why it's only pretty much half sheet rocked. <laughs> but Future plans are obviously to finish this sheetrock, redo the ceiling, fix it up. I mean, it's not in that bad of a shape, just needs some retaping and obviously some paint. Uh, but doing a sheetrock on here is definitely something I really want to do. It's going to make this whole entire garage seem so much brighter and so much more complete. Uh, this is a place that I love spending time in, so uh, I wouldn't mind putting some money into it and making it uh, that much more enjoyable space to be in. Now, doing sheetrock, I would do it myself, to be completely honest. I'm not any type of sheetrock expert. Uh, I've done small patches and stuff like that, but I've never done a room like this. Um, but, you know, something on this wall up there would be fairly easy. 
But what is actually kind of scaring me and making me not want to do it myself is all these wires over here because um, you can't just put sheetrock straight up to the 2x4s since there are wires running everywhere. You'd actually have to build out the wall with some 2x4s, uh, cut some holes so you can run all the lines and wires and stuff. Um, so I would actually leave that up to the professional to get that done. I also would like to kind of clean up the wires. There's a bunch running up here. I don't know what half of these wires are. Um, so I would love for an electrician to come out here kind of clean up the wires and just make it much neater and, and more presentable, even though it would be behind walls, just knowing it was cleaned up and any wires that are not being used can be taken out. Now, as for the storage space, these shelves were here when we moved in. Uh, absolutely hate these things. They give me anxiety like crazy. It's just a bunch of random crap uh, that we honestly haven't really gone through and probably more than half of this stuff could be tossed out. One of these days, I'm going to take some time and go through it all and get rid of a lot of stuff. But uh, these shelves were here, so it serves a purpose, obviously. It's storing some stuff, uh, but ultimately, I would love to remove these, take these things down, um, and just get some really nice cabinets on this wall to kind of store all that stuff um, and get it off the ceiling and make it a little bit more presentable. But for now, it works. And we're just going to leave it until we actually get some time to get the garage done. Now, as for the garage door, this is one of my favorite parts and one of the things that I loved about this garage is that it is a large, I believe a 13 foot uh, door. Uh, so it's one single door. There's no post in the middle to get in the way from pulling into the middle of the garage. Um, it comes all up at once, which is really nice. It really opens it up, gives a lot of light, and I really, really enjoy that aspect of it. Um, the garage door opener, um, this was actually not the original one. We had an old one when we first moved in. It was a chain-driven, old-school you know, garage door opener that was super loud, uh, and then it went out on us, so I just went to Lowe's and got the Lowe's Special and got a Chamberlain. Uh, it does the job. It's super duper quiet. It's a belt driven. So you hardly even hear it. You literally just hear the door going up on the rails. Um, so it is really nice. So headed out early in the morning or late at night, don't hear a really loud garage door opening or closing, uh, which is really nice. But uh, I would love to get the LiftMaster one, the one that goes on the side. I, I wanted to get that when we were getting a new opener, uh, but we were in a bind and so we just got that. I think it was only like 200 bucks or so. Um, and the LiftMaster one that goes on the side is like 800 so a little bit more expensive. Eventually, I'm going to do it, uh, but this is serving the purpose just fine for now. The really nice part about the LiftMaster, the side uh, garage opener, is this whole entire monstrosity here, all this metal gets completely removed. So it kind of opens up the entire space, and plus, if you ever wanted to get a lift in here, uh, it allows you to do so. You could also get the high-rise um, you know, door to make the door go all the way up to the ceiling, um, so that is definitely a possibility. Now, I got really lucky with this garage in terms of height. Most garage ceilings are fairly low. Um, they're usually, you know, what, nine, 10 feet or so, but this is actually, I think, 12 feet. Um, so I think it honestly is the perfect height for a garage. It doesn't feel claustrophobic. You feel nice and open. There's a lot of space. If you ever wanted to put a lift in here, you certainly can. Um, so I really, really enjoy the overall height of this. Um, it's, you know, it's not too big or too tall where you would need crazy amount of lighting to actually light up this space. Um, so it's really a, a really nice height, 12 feet definitely think is the way to go if you are building a garage. Now, in terms of lighting, these are actually an Amazon special. I picked these up uh, probably about three years ago. There are linkable LED lights. Uh, it's a really, really cool design. You literally can uh, connect them. Obviously, you can see this looks like one light. They're actually four feet long, uh, but you can actually plug them in to make a really long light. And you could also link them with the wires there as well. The really cool thing about it is you don't need an electrician. You don't need anybody to come out to wire them up. They simply just plug straight into a normal outlet like it is up there. They are super bright. They get the job done um, and they are all controlled by my phone. So if you look up in the actual outlet, that little circle that is plugged into is actually a smart plug, a Wi-Fi plug. So I have everything plugged into that. I actually have one over here as well. Um, and that is linked to my phone. So all I do is I come out here, press the button, and they turn on. So I don't have to worry about a switch or anything like that, which is really nice. So if you can add as much lighting as you want just by using the smart plugs, um, and I thought it was a pretty ingenious idea, I thought of it myself, uh, and has worked out great over the last three years. Now up here, these are existing light fixtures that were just there um, when I moved in, obviously. It was just normal, you know, the normal 60 watt bulbs in here, super dark. And I got these really cool LED um, bulbs. I don't even know what you call them, but they are fairly bright and they do the job pretty well. Uh, but getting these tube lights, these linkable lights really, really, uh, brightened up the room. I actually have one underneath the workbench here, which we'll go over in a little bit. Um, and it lights up this area very, very well. 
Now let's go over one of my favorite parts about the entire garage that I absolutely love is Swiss tracks. Now, a lot of people ask me a million questions all the time. You know, how do you like it? What kind of flooring is it? How much does it cost? Is it worth it? Uh, a lot of people just do the basic epoxy flooring. And for me, epoxy just, it can look really good. There's no question about it. I've seen some really nice epoxy floors. Swiss tracks is literally a tile. It's a plastic tile that you can piece together um, and make any design you want. They have multiple colors. You can do any design, any theme, any color that you want. For me, I just went with the basic obsessed garage color. I think this is the best look. Very clean, uh, very subtle. It's not in your face. I don't like loud colors in garages. It's just a jet black border that goes all the way around. Uh, and then the gray, I believe is called slate gray. Really nice part about this is there's channels. So any of the dirt and everything just falls straight through. So the floor looks clean at all times. Uh, I vacuum it every you know couple months or so. Um, especially in the winter when we're in and out of here, when the snow and everything like that, I vacuum it every few months uh, and it picks everything up. This summer, I'll probably pull the entire floor out, do a really thorough cleaning, uh, but overall, it stays nice and clean, looks fantastic, and I absolutely love this stuff. Another thing that you guys have seen me do in this garage is actually wash the car. A lot of people always ask me, how do you wash your car in the garage, especially with the tiles? Does the water stay under there? How does it work? Uh, the really cool thing about Swiss tracks is there's actually channels underneath each tile. Uh, so when I do wash in here, it actually just flows through all the little channels underneath and straight out to the driveway. Granted, my garage slab is properly pitched, um, so all the water just runs straight out into the driveway. I never have any issues with water kind of standing still. Um, you know, in the summer months when it's a little bit warmer, it actually dries up uh, that night. And if the weather's a little bit colder out, I wash it in the winter, usually the floor is dry by the next morning. So I've never had any issues. You can kind of see the floor through the little slats. It looks pretty good, honestly, for a 30 year old slab, actually older than that now that I think of it. Um, and I haven't had any issues. I've been washing cars in here for almost a decade or so, um, and I haven't had a single issue. So it's really nice stuff. Now, real quick, before we move on to uh, another thing in the garage, uh, the reason why I didn't choose epoxy is for a couple of reasons. Believe it or not, doing a proper epoxy job uh, actually it was a little bit more expensive to do this space as opposed to Swiss tracks. Pricing is obviously going to be different depending on where you live, you know, who you're actually hiring and all that. Uh, but overall for a 20 by 20 garage, you're looking at around two grand or so for Swiss tracks. Obviously that's kind of where I paid around that area a couple, about a year ago, a little over a year ago now. Um, so obviously prices has jumped up uh, drastically given the environment, but um, that is kind of what you're looking at. Now epoxy, I was getting quotes for like 3,000, 4,000, uh, and I thought that was kind of crazy. Now, another reason that really popped in my head as to why I didn't want to spend money on epoxy was you can't take it with you. If we ever move from this house, that $3,000, $4,000 floor is staying with this house. And honestly, you would never get that money back. Somebody's not gonna come in here and say, oh, I'm gonna spend an extra you know, five grand on that house because it has epoxy flooring. Um, so you know, if I ever moved, I literally can just pick up this Swiss tracks, move it to the next house. If the garage is bigger or smaller or whatever, I can just add or subtract to it and it's like it's been there all along. So it is a really, really nice feature about that. Another really cool feature of why I love this flooring so much is that if I got epoxy, if it starts to chip, it will never look as good as it did the first day. You can obviously touch it up, but it never looks right. It kind of mismatches and everything, and I'm just not a big fan of it. If you ever damage a tile, you literally can just pop one up and put a new one in. They're like, I think, uh, five to seven dollars a tile or so. Um, so it's I would rather spend five or seven bucks and replace the tile like it never even happened than getting a company out here, you know, fixing up the epoxy, blending it, and having to do all that stuff. Um, so that is a really, really nice advantage for Swiss tracks. So if you are interested in picking up some Swiss tracks for your garage, let me know. I actually have a cool contact that I was working with when I did mine. It can actually give you a really, really good deal on it, better deals than they're offering at any point. So let me know. I actually leave all his contact information down in the description below. So uh, all you gotta do is contact Kyle, give him my name, and it'll hook you up with some awesome pricing and awesome discounts. Now moving on to the cabinetry. Um, I love this whole setup. Obviously I would love something a little bit bigger, but given the fact that we parked two cars in here and the door's right there, if I brought cabinets all the way to here and a car is parked here, it would literally be not enough room to maneuver around here and actually have a functioning garage. Granted, if I parked the car in the middle and only put one car in here, 
it would make a little bit more sense. But what I did was kind of downsize a little bit and kind of make it my little section right here, which is really nice. I absolutely love it. Uh, this toolbox is a Husky toolbox. I forget the size of it. I think it's like just under 70 inches, but I absolutely love this thing. Um, it has a lot of drawers for all your tools and uh, it's a really, really nice piece. And this was like a thousand bucks, I think, a little under at the time when I bought it. Um, and it has been absolutely amazing. The top is like a butcher block um, and it's held up very, very well over the last two years. Now I don't have a full complete tool set like a Sonic tool set, like, you know, Obsessed Garage people have or anything like that. But all the tools that I have is just kind of stuff that I acquired over the years. I've kind of gravitated towards getting Cobalt stuff just because of the little inserts that I got one year when I got a full tool set. Um, and then I just kind of started going with all their stuff. Um, and I've been happy with it. I don't really need the best of the best, um, but it has gotten the job done. So I just got some random things. Um, you know, this is like my tape drawer, zip ties and stuff like that. Um, down here is just an old polisher and some extension cords and some random things. So it gets the job done. It has power on the side, so you can plug as much as you want into there. And, um, you know, it powers the TV and the speakers and everything like that. It actually has my trickle charger plugged in as well. Uh, another really cool feature about this is the whole tabletop can raise up. There's a little uh, thing right here. You can actually take a crank that it comes with and crank it up and it moves up. Never found the need to do that, uh, but it does have that option. So you can lift it up if you're bending over doing work or something like that. I thought that was a really cool feature. Now, as for the large cabinet on the side, this is by Husky as well and has the black handles, which I prefer. They also have one in silver, but I wanted it to match the toolbox. Um, so I picked this up. Love this thing. This was like 300 bucks or so uh, for this size. I want to get another one to actually put over there and get a lot of this crap and put it into that cabinet and just make it a little bit nicer. But this is kind of my detailing cabinet where I keep my microfibers, all my brushes, my buckets and all that stuff. Um, and it has served me well. Granted, I use it for storage up top as well for all uh, parts and boxes and stuff that I like to keep just from the STI as well as the uh, truck, just kind of things that I have floating around. I also have parts up there, parts in that box. So I got things everywhere. Um, the only mismatch of this whole setup is the cabinets up top. These are by Gladiator. I got these on sale from, I think, Lowe's one year. Um, they're not that bad. They actually do have matching Husky ones, which I do eventually plan on getting. Um, but these are getting the job done. They're a little dinky. They're a little kind of wobbly. But like I said, they're nice and even. It looks good. And I never really found the need to upgrade just yet. It's black, but it's not the same. It's more of a gray uh, kind of finish, but one day I'll upgrade. Uh, maybe when I get another cabinet for over here, I'll kind of complete the set. Now, as for speakers, these are Edifier. I think the 1850s, I forget. They are Bluetooth speakers. They're their bookshelf speakers. These things sound phenomenal for the price. I think they're around 200 bucks. Uh, the only thing that I found that was missing from it was a little bit uh, of bass. So I ended up picking up a Polk Audio. I think it's a PDW10 or something like that. The 10 inch subwoofer plugs right into the back. It actually sounds really good for a garage. It gets the job done. Like I said, I just control music straight from my phone, stream it through there, and it sounds fantastic. I also have it hooked up to the TV right here, which is a basic uh, Samsung 32 inch LCD screen. This used to be in our house years and years ago um, and kind of traveled with me throughout the years. And then once we upgraded to something larger in the house, in the, in the bedroom, uh, I decided to throw it down here just to get something out here. I have a uh, Amazon Fire Stick plugged in here so I can watch YouTube and everything like that. I don't need a cable box or anything like that and it gets the job done. And I'm able to catch up on YouTube or watch whatever if I'm uh, working on the car uh, and just kind of make it a little bit more comfortable space to be in. Now, as for an air compressor, nothing special. Again, this is just a Lowe's or Home Depot special. It is a Husky um, tube style air compressor. It fits really well in here. It's black, so it matches everything. I got this years and years ago and it's held up just fine. So I'm able to uh, pump up the soccer balls and the bike tires and everything. Also, I have filled up car tires and stuff like that. I also use it as well to blow out uh, water when I wash cars kind of in certain areas and stuff like that as well. So on this side of the garage, I almost forgot about this thing, but this is a Bissell Garage Pro wet dry garage vac. Absolutely love this thing. I got it on Amazon about a year ago. Uh, it's around $200 or so. I don't know what the pricing is now, uh, but it gets the job done for the weekend warrior to vacuum out cars or to vacuum out the floor. 
uh, and it works fantastic. The hose is a little cheap. I wish it was a little bit better quality. Um, I believe you can upgrade to something a little bit nicer, but like I said, it gets the job done. It's plugged in here at all times. I used to hate bringing out the shop vac to vacuum anything. It was just a pain in the ass wheeling that thing around and bumping into the walls and the car sometimes. Uh, so having something permanently mounted uh, with a long enough hose that I can reach all the way to the corner of the garage or all the way out into the, into the driveway, um, it really does get the job done very, very well. So I've done a whole video on this. If you're interested in watching the whole entire install of this, go ahead and check that video out. Now, the last piece of this garage before we wrap this video up is the pressure washer setup. Uh, it's nothing crazy, it's nothing extravagant, it's no obsessed garage pressure washer solution, but it gets the job done and uh, it's worked very, very well for I think the last four years. Uh, this is actually a Greenworks 2000 PSI pressure washer. Uh, I bought it uh, from Home Depot, I believe. It used to be like $180 and they were getting rid of this model and it was on clearance and I got it for $60. <laughs> so uh, I definitely have gotten my money's worth out of this thing. It actually came on a little cart that you can wheel around, but I ended up taking it off that cart, tossing the cart, and then I had these uh, bracket, these J bracket hooks or whatever you wanna call them. I had them laying around and actually fit uh, around these very, very well. So I threw some screws and nuts on there and it's on there nice and firm and it's been on there for the last four years. I have all the lines here, this is my hose. This is like an Amazon special, it's worked well. I've had this thing for like six years. Um, it's a 50 foot hose, so I'm able to wash cars in the garage or all the way out in the driveway if I want to. Um, it's not the best hose, it's kind of hard to move around and everything, but like I said, it gets the job done. Uh, and here's the power cord, I just run that over to the uh, outlet over there. Um, this is the gun that I use. This is an MTM 407. I've had this thing for almost a decade now. Uh, it doesn't look very pretty, but again, it gets the job done. I'm using a 25 degree nozzle um, and I use an MTM PF22 foam cannon. So if you're curious about what setup I use, that is what I use. I would love to upgrade to the Obsessed Garage solution at some point. I'll probably do that once I get all the sheetrock and everything uh, done in here when I get some nice lighting or even better lighting and the, you know everything painted and looking really nice uh, I'll probably do that then but that is pretty much it that is pretty much the walk around of the entire garage obviously I can go into way more detail about everything in the drawers and all that stuff but I figured I would give an overview explain everything because I get a lot of questions about this um, so I figured I would just make a video walking you guys through it and checking out the garage that you guys see in the videos all the time uh, and kind of giving a little bit of details about everything in here but yeah, guys, that's all I got for this one. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you got a little bit more of an idea of what I have in the garage uh, and kind of the workspace that I have around here. And I answer a lot of your guys' questions. Cause like I said, I get asked these questions very, very often. So having this dedicated video going over everything, I think is really gonna help and give some people ideas. I understand it is not the most beautiful looking thing in the entire world, but I promise you, I'm forever grateful for a space like this and each phase that I get to and kind of develop it and make it my own. Uh, I'm, I'm very, very thankful that I'm able to do any of this. Um, so it's really cool to kind of uh, take in each phase as it's coming because, you know, you see all these amazing garage builds on the internet and social media and you kind of get discouraged like, oh, I wish I had that and everything. And trust me, I've been there before. I never had a garage at one point and then I had a one car and then I have a two car and I kind of developed and built it into this, what it is today. Uh, and I'm, I'm very, very thankful for each phase of this. So um, don't get discouraged if you don't have a garage. I know what it feels like. You will get there one day, just work hard. And uh, I promise you, you can have a cool space like this at one point, but I appreciate each phase. And the reason why I say that is because anytime you get something new and kind of work your way towards something and you do get it, it just feels that much better and you appreciate it that much more. That is it for this one, guys. Again, any questions at all, ask them below. Hopefully we can do some more garage mods soon and get this looking even more proper than it already is. And I'll be sure to document it and make videos for you guys. But that is it for this one, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Any questions at all, be sure to ask them in the comments below. But in the meantime, keep it clean, keep it simple, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.